Okay. Okay, so everybody got my email sent from Angel. Did this successfully reach everyone? Anyone who didn't get my email announcing the first homework? That's the first email I sent. We got it? All right. And uh, also on Angel, I put in this um, introduction to MATLAB, um, which um, well, I didn't download yet. Well, you could download it, and which um, we plan to kind of go through today. And if everything goes well, you can start with the programming part of your homework, which is the last two problems, right? Problem mm -hmm. four, basically say play around with MATLAB, and problem five, write your first function, your first code in MATLAB, all right? Okay, so then let me do this. I'll just give you some introduction about MATLAB, some blah, blah talking. So it's a um, pretty advanced program package tool so I wrote those slides probably 10 years ago when I was teaching a similar course, no, more than 10 years ago. Where did I, when did I write that? Oh, many years ago. I was actually teaching it in Trondheim in Norway. Okay. So I set up these lecture notes at there already. And at that time, this is, it's considered a very advanced program package. Well, still it is. They developed a lot. So there are some great advantages. It's easy to use, I have to say, and very easy to program. If you um, can program in C, you can do it. Or C++ will be um, more, uh, it will be closer in the mindset of something called object-oriented set. Okay? And, then, and then, you know, um, if you have played with C or Fortran, there's an annoying thing that you have to compile, and then it doesn't pass. You never get to run that code <laughs> until you pass all these things. But what's nice with MATLAB is that you can run it interactively. You write one line and you click execute, there's a button there in the MATLAB popping, and it runs right away. And then you can say in the command line plot it, and it shows you right away how the function looks like so you don't have to export the data to some file, save it, and let it read by some graphing tool, and then plot and see it. Okay, it's all in one, so it's really nice. And it has a very powerful graphic tool. It can do 2D or 3D plots, and it can do animations and blah, blah. Hopefully we'll get to learn some of these, okay? And it's called MATLAB. The math part is for a short for mathematics. So it has a lot of building numerical functions that you will use, okay? Lots of things actually what we have to do, they are already there, but we will pretend that we try to do it from scratch. We will learn some programming also, okay? No. Still you need to know what a function does to be able to use it. But if your problem doesn't exactly fit to that function, you have to write it, how do you do it, okay? So, and there are many toolboxes. The ODE tool we will touch up towards the end. And then another nice thing is, well, those, those are at a developer level that has something to do with the efficiency of the program. That is, if you have a set of Fortran code and C code, once you run, you compile it, you have an executable file, you can link it to MATLAB. Okay. So, that is actually how the source code for all the functions in MATLAB are designed. They are written in C or Fortran, okay, and then just linked into the whole MATLAB package. And the reason for that is because Fortran and C files, they run faster. Later we'll talk about that. Efficiency of programming. <coughs> so here comes one disadvantage of MATLAB. It's relatively slow comparing to other languages that you compile. Okay? But not to, you would not notice that for the problem you'll be facing here. Okay? Later on, when beyond this course, you go into research and maybe you end up doing numerical simulation and you do 2D or 3D simulation, huge ones. Then you really need to worry about how fast your code is. Okay? But right now, it's academic, we're just learning the basic concepts. So <coughs> it's slow, but it will not affect anything. Okay. 
So, okay, so, okay, so I actually was wrong. The math lab, the math part is for matrix, for math and matrix. It's good for, for both. So that says how the building block for math lab is. So the data structure in math lab, the smallest unit it uses is actually a matrix. If you have a single number you send in, it's considered a matrix of size one times one. And you're sending a vector, say a column vector of length n, it's a matrix of size of n times one. Is that clear? Okay, so, and then there are especially really, really good um, matrix operations already defined, like solving AX equals to B, which we'll play with today, <coughs> and uh, finding um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and all these factorization, LU factorization, QR factorization. If you if you have taken matrix, maybe you know this, but if not, it's okay. But they're already all designed there, at least uh, the basic basic um, program. Not if you give especially nasty matrix, then you have to take care of it. Okay? So it's matrix of double precision. So we talked about how computers store data. But the example we had is a single precision. MATLAB is double, so it's actually 64 bit of length. So it has many, many more decimal points. Is that clear? Right. Those you won't notice. Okay, I just let you know. Okay, so um, um, did we all find the MATLAB in your computer? If you go to the start there, when you say search program, if you just type in MATLAB, let me show you. And then there is that thing, one suggestion, click on it, and it will open the map lab. And it's this one. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. So here's your command window where you can type in things. And here is history. And then there will pop up like graphs when you type graphic things. Okay, so let's run this example I have on the slide on the map lab and see. So if you say, you define the variable, you call it A, and you set it to be 2, and then you hit a return, and it tells you now A equals to 2, it's stored. So you don't have to declare your variable as for term of C forces you to do it. Anytime dynamically, you can declare it. You just name it, give it a name, and set it to be something you have. Okay? And uh, let's see. Okay, so let's put a vector. Let's say a vector x. Let's do a column vector. Mm -hmm. What do you want this vector to have? One, two, three, is that okay? You type in a one, you do a semicolon, that means you return, that goes to the next one. You type a two, and type a three. Make sure to close it with this fancy bracket, okay? And you hit a return. So there you go, you get a vector. Is that clear? Okay. And then now if you want to input a matrix, now matrix has double index, so let's call our matrix A. A equals to, so what matrix do we want to put in? There is some fancy matrix that I have here. So how about we put in a matrix um, one, okay, just do one, two, three, first row, um, four, five, six, something like that. Is that okay? So let's say I have one, space, two, space, three, and then I put the semicolon, and it goes to the next row, right? Four, five, six. Semicolon, seven, eight, nine, and then you have to close it with that bracket. Okay, then hit return, there's your matrix. Is that okay? And then sometimes it's useful that you declared many variables and you forgot what I have declared. You can just ask who, and it tells you you have those variables declared. Okay? So uh, these are all actually in the in the notes of getting started with Okay, so now let's say I want to solve a system of linear equations written in a matrix vector form. So A times X equals to B, mm -hmm. where um, this is your A matrix, and that's your right-hand side vector B, and then your unknown is a vector X. So how do you solve it in that? Let me remember this <laughs> matrix. So one, two, three, seven, eight, zero. Okay, let's do that. Let's rewrite my A. It's one, two, three, 
comma, four, five, six. I think there might be a typo. I thought I put seven in. So I put in a new A matrix. I hit return. Now you see, if I put an additional semicolon at the end, when I hit return, it doesn't show that. Okay, so if you don't want a lot of output as you run the program, you can put semicolon at the end when you declare put values and then it doesn't print out. And then you can say, I want to see what A is. You put an A and it shows you what it is. Okay? Now let's put the B vector. B vector is what? Just one, two, three. Okay, so one, comma, two, comma, three. All right, so I have a B. Let's see what is the B. B is one, two, three. So in MATLAB, if you just want to solve this, it's really, really easy. So once you get an A and you get a B and you want to solve it, all you type in is a, this kind of a backslash, I don't know how to call that thing, the backslash, B. That means A inverse times B. Okay? So let's do this. I can do this, X equals to A. to write I and V, that's to find the inverse of a matrix, and you put the matrix A in it, and this gives you an inverse matrix you can look at. It. That's the inverse matrix of A. So you can say inverse matrix of my A times B, so it's a matrix times B, just a matrix. And you get the same inverse. Okay? So this is just some example. You can follow the, the introduction and play with it and get familiar with it. So my plan for you to do is to go through chapter one, chapter two in that book, mm -hmm. in the introduction, and uh, and try to get started with the, the homework, homework problems where you have to write a very short code, right? So um, maybe I should mention that. So in, in MATLAB, you can define functions. This is something you have to do. So. It would be nice to write them in a script file. You should probably create a folder for 451 on, on the drive where you put all your files there, and they are called the function name .m, m for MATLAB, right? And then you put the file there. So is there a, let's say I open the script. Okay, you can have an edit window, you can write a script, let's say you define a function. See how that works? Let's say you want function y equals to f and you send in your variable x and t. So you are defining a function that defines not x and t. Does it have to have an end? And then you can write, let's say I want y to be sine of x, let's say times e to the t, exp. So let's say I would like to, like this to do vector option. So I put dot times. So it's a vector times a vector, and it returns a vector. It does element-wise multiplication of vectors. Okay, and then I should do dot. Dot multiply is vector operation, not just regular numbers. If you try to multiply like that, you send in two vectors, it will tell you the size of the matrix. But normally one will do it as a matrix times a matrix. But if you do dot, it just multiplies each element in the corresponding place and turn it in a vector in the same place. So that's how you write a function. And then once you have written it, let's call it f test, test function. Right? Where should I save it? I don't have a page. Save. Okay, no. Just save it here. That's my current window, right? Okay. And then you can go back to the combined window and you say, um, what if I say F test, I send in some number, X 
x is 2, t is 4, and we should compute the sine of 2 multiplied by exponential 4, and that's the value. Is that clear how it's working? Okay, probably you should go through chapter 1 and 2 before you get to this point. Yeah. Right? So those of you that have already done chapter 1 and 2, if you have specific questions, I'm here to help you. So play with it, and uh, any questions, you ask.